Well, it's been about a month since I've uh, posted any videos. Been kind of busy uh, and just working and, you know, general life stuff. But I figured I'd do a quick little teardown video on this uh, attenuator set that I just purchased. It's an HP uh, 350D. It, uh, it has a bandwidth of DC to uh, 1 megahertz. It has, it's for use for 600 ohm loads. And I needed something basically to improve or increase the usefulness of my uh, HP 204C that you see in the background there. It's just got just a, a variable output control, but I wanted something that I could go in known steps. Either 1 dB steps or 10 dB steps. Uh, according to the HP catalog, this instrument was first offered in 1963. So... Uh, you know, for something that's uh, 50 near that you know is possibly 57 years old. I'm not sure what year this one was made, but I know it was made in the 60s. There's not really a lot to look at on this thing. It's uh, you know, it's they just used just a uh, a regular instrument case and they just plugged off the uh, the power plug hole there. Uh, one way you can tell these were made in the 60s was the shape of this power uh, opening. Uh, in the 60s, they used this oval-shaped power plug. And then in the 70s, I believe they switched over to, you know, the computer-style power cables. But anyway, I uh, want to just open this thing up, kind of show the inside. I, uh, when I first got this, I had to take it apart and uh, tighten up the, the shaft here, the nut shaft on this attenuator, because it was a little sloppy. But anyway, let me uh, get this thing opened up and uh, show you what it looks like on the inside. Well, as you can see, there's uh, really not a lot in there. Just a couple of large attenuator cans, you know, coax cables uh, for interconnects, <clears throat> RG58. And uh, there's uh, one, looks like a bypass cap in there for, uh, for ground. And just the binding posts. But uh, typical uh, construction for an instrument of this age, but it's awfully clean on the inside. There's maybe a little bit of dust, but not a lot of grime and gunk. But uh, let me uh, get this thing hooked up, and uh, we'll kind of see uh, just how well it's uh, held, or at least held within its specifications after all these years. So for this test, we are using my HP 204C oscillator. I have it set to uh, 0 dB at 1 kilohertz. So now we will take the uh, attenuator set and we will add 1 dB. And we're within a tenth of a dB of that. There's 2 dB, same thing, about a tenth of a dB. There's 3, there's 4, slightly, well, I don't know, about the same. There's 5, there's 6 dB. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Helps if I grab the right knob. Not bad. So, now that we're back to zero, let's try adding t the lower dB pad here. There's ten. So we will take this control and we'll jump it up. And yeah, we're within uh, 0.2 dB. There's 20 dB, and we're the same, pretty much uh, 0.2 dB. Let's go to 30 dB, and we're about the same there, about 0.2. Let's go to 40, and we're within uh, at least 0.1 dB there. There's 50 dB. And we're just a little over 0.2, about 0.25. That's still uh, public specification-wise, I guess. So now, go down to 60 dB. And it looks like we're going to be about the same there. Yeah, a little over 0.2 dB. Now let's go to 70. Yeah, it looks like it needs to settle a little bit. But that's about the same thing, about 0.2 some odd dB. Not bad. Now if I go down to 80, it should drop down to that first tick mark on the scale. 
And there it is. I really can't go any lower because <laughs> oh, I'm running out of range here. So I go to 90 and uh, should be just be just internal noise of the meter registering. Let's go down to 100. Yeah, just internal noise of the meter registering. So yeah, I would say that that was a uh, successful test there. But not bad for a uh, for something that's as old as it is. Definitely uh, definitely they got a good deal on this. But anyway, like I said, I'm only using I'm gonna be using this for, for mostly audio work anyway. I'm not gonna really use it in the uh, the, the low HF range and it was just essentially just to give my oscillator a little bit more versatility as far as uh, output control. But anyway, uh, I think that's pretty much it for now. Uh, hopefully I'll uh, come up with something later. I've been working on some HPIB stuff, so hopefully I'll have that uh, ready to go here before too much longer. But anyway, uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, this uh, little short teardown, so uh, we'll catch you next time.